This is why I look at the piano as a, as a percussion instrument, like an 88 drums. Omar Sosa's 88 Well-Tuned Drums. This is a film by Soren Sorensen, and it's up for Best Feature Documentary, Best Music-Related Film, Best Sound, Best Documentary Subject uh, for Omar Sosa. So thank you so much, Soren, for coming here and joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Do you feel that your responsibility shifted in tackling a public subject versus your subjects previous? Uh, not really, because I guess the, the, the first two um, films you're speaking of, uh, My Father's Vietnam and With Dad, um, both deal with really public subject matter as well. Uh, the first one being the Vietnam War and the second one being Alzheimer's disease. So, um, you know, this this is more this is probably more personal than it, it, it seems to be since it's a it's a conventional biographical documentary in some ways um, or in a lot of ways um, because this music or, or music like what Omar's talking about at the top of the film and, and like his influences um, you know Ira Kire and, and Weather Report and Fusion and, and you know Hard Bop and all that stuff that he was talking about at the beginning of the film um, that's all stuff that I uh, you know in a way grew up on um, though in a, in a different context because I grew up in Connecticut in the United States um, and Omar of course grew up in in Canada Camagüey, Cuba. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, so in a way, they're they're both public, but they're both personal. Or you know, all, or all three of them are both public and, and personal at the same time. You have so many different moving pieces in this film. So you have primary interviews, you have archival footage, concert footage, um, and then all the while you have the secondary plot line with this um, story about Araguay and the coconut. Can you talk about the significance of including that within the film? Ilegua is uh, is is like an Orisha of Santeria. Um, it's and and Omar. It's it's never really far from from Omar's mind or or the the ritual that he that he um, partakes in before uh, coming out on stage and 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 as he comes out on stage with the candle and stuff. And so having him explain Ilegua at the top of the film and a little bit about his, his religion. Um, I knew that was something I wanted to kind of like maybe give the audience sort of a breather from it's, it's a music heavy film. It's a story heavy film. Um, and, and also give a little bit of the, the backstory of that um, deity um, without, you know, being, you know, certainly being a, like a white person explaining <laughs> Santeria or that religion to anybody that that was not my intent at all. It's, it's just more like, Kind of to give a backbone to this story and and trace Elegua's, um, you know, existence or or birth, um, you know, the the, the beginnings, the uh, the genesis, um, with Omar's essentially, and you know, not comparing him or saying that he's Elegua or anything like that. It's just it's 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 just the the the, the duality um, of of human of, of humanity, um, uh, open and closed doors, um, light and darkness, and all that stuff that Omar um, Omar speaks about um, more eloquently than I can do uh, in the film. How many interviews did it take for you to um, get the footage you needed for this film? And did that end up being more or less uh, interviews than you expected? Well, everything's more um, it, than I expected. So, you know, we, we started out with a, a conversation, um, m you know, more than 10 years ago, uh, just via Skype. Um, where I was interviewing him for a freelance uh, writing assignment for a, um, a, a publication called Tribe Magazine based here in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and uh, and we did a, we ended up being like an hour long conversation. So we just sort of did a Q&A thing, like question, answer, question, answer kind of thing. Um, but it, it became, you know, quickly evident that, you know, he's easy to talk to, generous with his time um, and, and you know, fun to talk to. And, and I, I knew that he had this kind of D, d, you know, a, a astounding backstory or this, this, you know, this trip from, um, you know, obscurity or, or, you know, being just another, you know, uh, uh, conservatory trained musician um, in Cuba to being, you know, world renowned, um, you know, routinely paying, playing upwards of, you know, 80 to 100 concerts on five continents uh, annually. Um, so, you know, like we, so then, then it was like, okay, will you do one conversation with me and we'll see where it goes. And then, yeah, th that one turned into two, turned into four and, and, uh, you know, this, this long long-term project that I don't think he realized how long it would take and I certainly didn't um, but but now now that it's coming out we're, we're both really thrilled about it he, he he loves the film and he got to see it at its premiere in April we sat next to each other and laughed and it was really you know it was great I mean it was nice nice to see him and um, you know we keep in touch he's always he's always hitting me up on whatsapp and <laughs> letting me know like different places we should show the film and stuff like that so he, he's he's a great character for sure are there any anecdotes that had to be cut that you wish could have been left in there were entire sort of files of activity that he that he engages in that I, I would have loved to have shared like, um, you know, there's there, I have a lot of behind the scenes um, uh, 
footage from the recording of his album Ile um, with the Quarteto Afro-Cubano, um, which is Ernesto Simpson, Leandro St. Hill, and Shildo Tomas. And, um, and, and it, it almost at one point that I thought the film was going to sort of be, you know, completely, you know, centered around this group. But as time went on, you know, Omar is such a prolific artist and he constantly is changing the, the, the band members he's playing with or the or the he's going back to different trios or duos or whatever he's, he's doing, depending upon what the tour calls for. And so, you know, a lot of the people that are in the film were things that that, that came after Ile was released. Um, and so I had to I had to sort of rethink those things. So yeah, not even anecdotes so much as just like, you know, having having really great footage of them recording that record, which I really like Ile. Um, and then, yeah, and, and even like I have a whole thing about him doing big band recordings with NDR Big Band in, in Germany, um, and, you know, that didn't even make it to the film. And these are spectacular albums they are probably among my favorite albums of his. But they just for one reason or another just didn't make it in. It's really complicated, you know, as, as I'm sure you all know, or you especially would know, like this, you're recording with a big band and like dealing with, okay, well, who's, who's on keys, who's on the drums, who's conducting, who's arranging. It, it just would have been a film in and of itself. So I, I, I let that sort of stand as a, as an EPK or it's out there on YouTube. Omar has a relationship when he collaborates with these people and it seems to be unique, um, like, you know, changing with the artist. Can you talk about the artistic relationship that you and Omar have? My opinion isn't the only opinion, but I feel like most of the opinions that I ran into is that the, he's just a pretty open, you know, free spirit, um, you know, easy to, again, easy to talk to, generous with his time and, and with his words and, and his stories. And, um, but, but our, you know, our, our relating to one another now is, is kind of, um, you know, like just any, any friends or any, any brotherhood, any relationship. I mean, he, he calls me family and it's an honor for him to call me that, but I, you know, it's really, um, you know, we, we've we've had disagreements along the way, like mainly about how long it was taking because he makes a record a year and I'm barely getting a film out after 10. So, um, you know, I, I think I think like um, the relationship's been really easy, though, with him. Like you, there's that there's that part in the film where I ask if it's OK to talk about something. And he says, well, if, if we don't like it in the edit, you'll cut it out. You know, Cameron, if you don't mind, I'm going to toss it over to you. Allegua. Sorry for pronouncing it, mispronouncing it. It's Allegua. Yeah, you go. Really, OK, it's the spine of the movie it feels and yeah. i guess i was just wondering what process did you realize that or focus in on that yeah we had we had a lot of metaphors for for that it was like it, it's a it's a you you have all the you know shells but no this or you know you need a spine or you need a, you need something to glue it to you have the pieces but you need something to glue it to so spine was definitely like a, a metaphor that was used for that for a while but we didn't i didn't have that idea until pretty late in the process like i had the segments pretty much complete and then it's like well how how do I glue this together without it feeling like just a bunch of short films or a bunch of electronic press kits or just promotional material that's already out there or something so or, or a concert film which would be great but it's just it's a different kind of film than that obviously um and uh in in one of Omar's I always forget the name of the the, the record but uh in, in one of Omar's in the liner notes of one of uh Omar's records uh Scott Price his manager had translated or, or obtained some text and, and translated um so it's in English and Spanish I believe pretty much verbatim um, several of the passages that I used. I edited them to, to, to mention Elegua more often, you know, and there were a couple couple things I edited or took out or, or, or added or whatever, but um, it was really that simple and it was, but it was really late in the process. Like I would say like last year, like it was just, you know, it was pretty, pretty recent that I figured out, okay, like this is a good way to kind of to, to put a backdrop on this. And then, you know, I had a consult, a great consulting editor, Chad Fredericks, um, who's, who's also a brilliant filmmaker. Um, and he sort of, sort of was seeing that coming together and saying, well, why don't we, why don't we push this segment in this direction or this segment in that direction and, and sort of line things up a little differently. And, and that continues to this day, honestly, like I'll watch it and say, oh, I could flip these two or whatever, you know, the pieces are really movable, um, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, this process as, as all of you know, is, is long and, and, you know, and then you have festivals and then you have streaming and then, you know, so you, you, you think about tinkering with it or making changes and um, the old adage that works of art are, are, are never finished. They're just abandoned, uh, you know, holds really, really true. It's, I, I should have that knitted into a pillow or something. I'm a lucky man, man. 